This is Chapter 16, Government Spends, Collects, and Owes, Discussion Number 4, The Federal Budget. According to United States law, no spending can actually happen until the United States Congress has approved a budget and the President has signed it. So, what exactly does it have to do in order to get a budget passed? Well, step number one is that the executive agencies, which does almost all the spending of the United States government, develop their requests for funds and their plans of what they want to do for the upcoming year, and they submit them to the President's of Office of Management and Budget. This was created during the Harding administration and really formed out during the Coolidge administration after Harding was shot. And essentially, the OMB and the President take all of the requests of all the executive agencies. They prioritize their spending based on their uh, ideas of what they really want the government to emphasize and do. They formulate a budget and they send it to Congress. Congress then sends it to the House. The House Budget Committee considers it. It goes through the House and then they pass it. There might be changes made to it. The Senate Budget uh, committee, they get it, they review it, they might change it, make changes on it, uh, then the Senate um, passes it, then the House and Senate ideas might be different, so they get together and then they put their ideas together, uh, they come up with the budget that both sides can agree to, then it goes back to the House, it goes back to the Senate, they both pass it, and then it goes to the President to being signed. Now remember that this was created by the United States government in order to make sure that this didn't go completely rampant. But what happens if they don't complete it? Because the government fiscal year starts in October. And if what happens if it doesn't get passed by October? Well, first of all, uh, what can happen is essentially the government doesn't have permission to spend money. And so officially, according to law, they have to shut down. No more government stuff. And this has happened um, in the past 20 years where we've had government shutdowns, where national parks will close their doors and different government agencies will close their doors. Now, this doesn't mean that the prison systems all shut down and then all the prisoners are let to escape. There is some basic ideas that are left on automatic, um, but essentially the government shuts down. Now, what the government can do or what the Congress can do is they can say a continuing resolution which essentially says we're not going to take a look at new priorities, we're not going to take a look at new ways of spending money, we're going to say everyone who's spending money now can keep on spending the same amount of money. Uh, this has been done continu uh, many different times by the U.S. Congress uh, over the last 15, 20 years, where they've essentially said just keep the current spending amounts because we can't pass the new budget, or the president won't agree to the new budget. Uh, another vote that gets involved with can the government spend money or not is the debt ceiling. And the, again, by U.S. law, government is, is allowed to borrow a certain amount of money, and they're only allowed to go a certain amount into debt. Well, a lot of times the U.S. government, because it's constantly spending more money than it brings in, keeps on reaching that debt ceiling where they're not allowed to go any higher according to U.S. law. Well, what the Congress will do or can do is that they can pass another continuing resolution uh, to raise the debt ceiling that will allow them to borrow more money. So these are some things that you'll hear if you're paying attention to the news uh, when it comes around budget time that uh, whether the government can continue, whether there's going to be a shutdown, whether there's going to be continuing resolutions, debt ceilings. That's kind of what all that is about. So Congress's own um, while the president has his office of management and budget, Congress has their own congressional budget office, which tells the House and the Senate members essentially what the spending is going to end up like, what's going to happen, uh, what kind of positive or negative impacts is this going to have on the several different parts of the United States economy. And then the congressmen use that in their debates of whether the budget should be passed or not. Like I said before, fiscal year starts October 1. Uh, and then it goes through September 30th. Um, agency program managers spend the money as they're given permission to, hopefully by the uh, federal budget, but sometimes they p do it according to the, the continuing resolutions, according to the stipulations in the past budget, because a lot of times what's going to happen is that in the budget, it's not just going to say the U.S. Um, Department of Agriculture gets $18 billion. There's going to be very specific guidelines on how that money is spent, 
and the agency program managers are to make sure that they follow those rules. And the government accounting office makes sure that at the end of each fiscal year that the government didn't spend any more than they were supposed to in each of those categories and that they followed those stipulations as well is another important idea that the government accounting office goes after. Now, what happens every year? Well, since the 1950s, the United States government, for the most part, every year has spent more money than it has brought in by taxes. That is what is called a budget deficit, where they budgeted a certain amount of money, they spent more than what they brought in. Now, to pay for that extra spending, the government sells those treasury bills, notes, and bonds with interest to investors that we talked about in the previous chapter. Investors serve as a bank by loaning money to the government by buying these treasury bills, the treasury notes, the treasury bonds. Now, each year having a deficit, the total year-to-year -year accrual of deficits is the national debt. National debt's being measured in trillions uh, these days as we every year we've added to the debt by having deficits. And just to make sure that, I said this before, but make sure that you hear it now, is that most of our extra spending or most of the spending that goes above and beyond is on the social insurance programs because that is the largest category of spending that we have in the federal budget. This concludes discussion number four, the federal budget.